love this. My students are fantastic. I love them. Oh, I think uh, I do too. We're having a wonderful Bio 125 class. We're going to have to have some sort of little competition. At, oh, at the end hey, of the Stefan. Stefan, I have a burning question for you. It's about the structure of DNA. Uh, I, I got a few minutes. Rock I'll see you later. See you later. We'll talk about the course. Right. Let's come into my office. All right, this is a big one. So what was your burning question that you had from reading the, the textbook there, Mark? Well, so I'm reading the textbook in detail, like we do. And I'm looking at this phylogeny of bacteria, and right here on the page it says a whole phylum of bacteria is low GC, and another phylum is high GC. But right in your lecture, you talked about Shargoff's elegant rules about the structure of DNA and how A and G and T and C have to have these exact ratios. How can these organisms have DNA and have different amounts of G and C? Doesn't that break Shargoff's rules? Well, Mark, I, I think you uh, misinterpreted Shargoff's rule. And I just so happen to have uh, Shargoff's rule on my whiteboard Amazing. here and a couple of his data points. But remember from class that Shargoff's rule states that for any given organism, for all for any given organism, the percentage of A's will equal the percentage of T's, and the percentage of C's will equal the percentage of G's. And these are some actual results that Shargoff did as he broke open the cells and asked the percentage of A's and T's and C's and G's. In a human, for instance, 60% of the nucleotides are A's and T's, 40% are G's and C's. And you'll see it does vary, though. The rat is 56% A's and T's, yeast at 64% A's and T's. So within a human, 30% are A's, 30% are T's, 20% are G's, 20% are C's. It doesn't have to be uniform, and in fact, the fact that it differs between species actually lends some credibility that DNA is genetic information, that there is a bit of difference between different species. Well, well, that makes sense. So it could vary, but why would that, why would it ever vary? Why would it go between different amounts of G and C or A and T? Is that just random? Well, the, there is a bit of randomness in it, yes, but I, I like the example you brought up, these bacteria, and if you look closely, those high GC content bacteria, those tend to be the thermophiles that you lectured on uh, a little while ago. These heat-loving fellows right here, if you look at their GC content, it's almost sort of off the chart, you know, it can be you know, greater than 60% of the nucleotides are Gs and Cs. Now why would an organism have an evolutionary adaptation to have a greater amount of G's and C's. Well, if you re also remember from lecture, between A and T, between adenine and thymine, that base pair has two hydrogen bonds, whereas a cytosine and a guanine has three hydrogen bonds. Ah. A considerably stronger non-covalent interaction than the non-covalent interaction between A's and T's. So the theory is the evolutionary adaptation to living in a very hot environment to prevent the DNA from separating is to have a higher GC content than other organisms who aren't faced with that environmental constraint. That makes total sense. Shargoff is saved. Shargoff is saved. Thanks, Stephanie.